Hi, my name is Dave Young from CryptoVest.com and this is Token Talk, your weekly overview of what's interesting and up and coming in the world of ICOs. Now, don't forget this is just an opinion piece, no paid slots, no sponsors, my opinion, my opinion only. If you wish to invest, you will need to do your own financial due diligence. Now, let's just quickly go through the format of what we're going to do. I spend one to two days sifting through piles of ICOs, most of them absolute shite, looking for some interesting prospects that I would consider to invest in. I pick those out, I get two runners for the week, and I dive in deep. So if you want to save yourself some time, if you want to get on the inside track a little bit faster, you probably want to subscribe. Now don't forget, ICO information is very time sensitive. So it'd be awful for you to find a runner, the one that you want to invest in, and find you've missed the whitelist, uh, the registration, or the sale. So you probably want to subscribe, and you probably also want to hit the little bell button next to it so you get notified when interesting ICOs are coming up. So this week we have D-Chain, Big Data and Machine Learning, GAM, Global Alliance of Merchants on the Blockchain, DX Chain, or for those in the know, D-Chain, because they tell me the big D is for the big data and the X is for the exchange of information going on in the background. I do like that crafty marketing concept, quite cool. So what do we have? We have cloud computing, we have blockchain, we have big data and machine learning and processing. Hadoop software in particular, Apache Hadoop. Uh, right, so they're going to crowd sell. They have a hard cap of $21.5 million. They've raised already 17.5 from the pre-sale and the private sale rounds with the big VCs and the bigger players. Uh, they've opened their whitelist registration for Know Your Customer on 9th of July. It'll run for a couple of weeks. If you're interested, you'll need to get in that straight away. And then they're going to announce just before the race starts the actual date for the crowd sale. You know, build up that fear of missing out. It's, it's all necessary to create demand in, in the market, I believe. So let's get across to the team and they're, they're heavyweights. They really stack up. It's good looking. They've got a lot of experience on the business side, blockchain and on the big data. So we start off with uh, Wei Wang, who's their big data guy. He seems to have a great record in Hadoop. And I was watching an interview with him for about 20 minutes and he really seemed to know his shit inside out. He stacks up well. Then there's James Lee and Alan Zung and they're blockchain guys and their records look really impressive. And it goes on, the team is good. Then we get to the backers. Just look at all these backers here. There's some big names there, but don't forget, these guys have already put 80% in, so they must have confidence in the project. If they wanted, they could easily throw in the other 20%. They could easily drop the crown sale and do it on a bootleg budget, but they wouldn't have all those token holders getting excited, creating the demand, spreading the new religion. Then we have the white paper, which is more of a technical paper, really. It doesn't go into much business logic, business case scenario. But it's really well detailed. It takes a fair bit to get through it, but I thought it was, it was well laid out. So you've got blockchain. They're doing similar to Anchor. They've got chain on chain. allows you to get faster transactions, scale up if you get it all right. Uh, then they're going to use two algorithms, one for proof of useful work where all those miners will be doing computational tasks as part of the big data processing, which is the useful work. Then you have proof of space time, which is a, a new algorithm, which is untested, might make some of the investors a little nervous about how much disk space is being offered. So then we come Come to the Hadoop, which is the Apache open source software, which is really good at grilling distributed big data sets that are spread out over everywhere. And it can help with all that big data flying around in the air to let scientists work out quicker what the meaning of life is, to let them to compute and back up uh, what the average number of fish a Somalian sea pirate might dream about eating in his lifetime. Then. We come to the hype. How much hype? Is the market getting excited about it? Well, uh, it's a little bit hard to measure because they kind of bombed the Telegram channel out with 40, 50,000 people on an airdrop. I think that was very short-sighted. It's gonna hurt them a little bit in the long run and it means there's an artificial hype there. But putting that to one side, looking around what people are saying, going through the investors groups and people are talking about DX chain. There seems to be a bit of a buzz. I think a lot of them get stuck and they think, oh, big data, sexy, and they don't go much deeper, but they get excited, they want to get in. So in that way, it is getting some momentum, it's getting some traction. 
So for the short term, I am extremely bullish. I think this one's got great potential. Obviously, watch the timing, it will matter a lot. For the long term, I'm gonna have to stay neutral. Uh, I think the team's very strong. I think big data is a great direction. I think the whole concept's really interesting, but maybe I'm missing something. Maybe there's another business case. Maybe there's another business plan that the VCs, the, the bigger boys got to see. They didn't want to put it out there. Maybe they thought that the ICO investor, big data and everything, that would be enough and it confused them and no point making it too hard because they put out some fuzzy user cases about, or maybe Google wants to sell their data, maybe this, maybe that, maybe smart cities, and they talk about marketplace, the data on, and everyone gets in there. So, okay, let's take a couple of these points apart. They talk about Hadoop, you know, putting this great tool that does distributed data, can sort everything out, putting it available for people that couldn't get it before because the equipment was too expensive. Hey, wake up and smell the coffee, Google, Amazon Web Servers, Hadoop, it's there. It's nothing different. Then we move on to this big data is just there, you know, and it goes on the marketplace, maybe Facebook or Google, everyone can understand, they're gonna put their data on. Have they got agreements? I don't know. But most of big data, a lot of the big data, the problems are, it's a very complicated field, is getting the big data in a form you can actually use it. Often it takes 60% of the cost to actually get it there, clean it up, make it good. Uh, then there's all sorts of issues on security, confidentiality, people actually wanting to release that data to make it not just data, to make it big data. And all that's ignored, it's like it just happens in the background. So for me, that's very fuzzy. I'm sure the team's strong enough that once they get stuck in, they've got good enough money behind them, they'll actually find solutions, they'll find a way, but I don't think they'll actually move forward in the simple case that they've put forward out in the plans at the moment. GAMB. Now, why did this one catch my attention? Well, uh, the idea, the business logic was compelling. They've got massive experience in their retail sector, the online retail sector. Uh, they've got traction. They've got merchants through their existing business turning over a couple of billion euros a year. And on certain ICO sites, they seem to be getting a hell of a lot of attention, a lot of reviews, and most of it quite positive. Uh, so let's get down to what it's all about. It's all about that you take a tech giant like Amazon and they've got monopoly dominance in the re online retail sector in geographical sections of the world, which is obviously bad news because it means they can tilt the game towards them. They can make the rules suiting them, not suiting the smaller players. They can change it as they want and they're always pushing their margins up. So in steps our guys and they want to set up a decentralized blockchain version of merchants in an organization the global alliance of merchants on blockchain uh, they've had this company called gambio which started in 2005 and it makes e-commerce software which helps people with not much tech knowledge jump into set up a site set up a web thing handle the payments all the partners and get online really fast to start trading and they've already got people on boarded working on this more than 25,000 existing customers so from there they want to sell this decentralized blockchain controlled democratic alliance where all the merchants have a say they have voting rights uh, they, they don't get pushed around, they get to decide how it's going to be. That's all in the theory. It's all raised the money, the hard cap's $30 million. Uh, it's gonna be raised by the GMB token. GMB token must be used for stakeholders. You're gonna be in there as a merchant, you must hold some stake. If you hold enough, you can also get discounts and work as the reward scheme. It'll pay for the fees as the merchants need to pay for their fees off the, uh, off the, the trades they do with it. But take note, it is not going to be used at present for the key payment systems. So you have all that, and let's look at the team. The team comes from Gambio. There's a big technical team, software, good online experience. They've bolstered them up, put some more experts in, and they look like a serious contender. If you wanna set up a serious new online market presence, these are the guys that look like they can do it. They've got that oomph. So let's take a look at the short-term assessment for myself. So we have all that. Let's break it down a little bit. You've got a buzz. Have we got a buzz? No, we haven't got a buzz. We've got nearly 100,000 users in the Telegram channel. But 
nearly most of them were put there by an airdrop campaign. They admit it themselves. So that's a, a false flag. That's not really happening. Then we're into the pre-sale and the pre-sale, they're aiming, as I said, for by the end of the crowd sale or the end of the pre-sale, 30 million. They've got, got in there, they've got 11 and a half million, one week and it's not really moving forward. So there's not a lot of traction from investors there. There's no fear of missing out. So there's not gonna be a lot of unmet demand even if they do reach their figures. So in that way, I'm gonna have to say neutral for the short term. So long-term assessment, let's split this into two levels. One, let's do a long-term assessment on the commercial success of the business. The team, the players, what they've got, traction. Can they be a commercial success? Can they make it move? I think yes, I think they look very good. Secondly, long-term assessment as a token holder, neutral with some concerns. First concern, they onboarded 50 to 90,000 players into the Telegram channel just to get them to bulk up the numbers and they gave them $9 each out of the future funds. They've just blown $9 times 50,000, half a million almost to three quarters of a million on that. I think that was very bad value, not money well spent. They think they get a good effect from that. Then you've got, going to be this decentralized democratic thing. If it's going to move forward, it's going to need to be a commercial business with business leadership, not a cooperative. So will it be seen through as not really cooperative? Because if you're going to make it work, it's going to have to operate as a business with the proper, proper leadership pushing it on. Then we come down to the token. The token is not core to everything. It doesn't deliver that much. Uh, so it might not be used that much. And then we've got the, there was a concern about lack of blockchain experience. Well, hey, that doesn't worry me because I think they can subcontract out the blockchain because at the end of the day, the whole business could actually run in the same form, achieve the same commercial goals without the blockchain. It feels like they're a concept and they went, how can we structure this all so we can go and get an ICO and go and get the token? That always worries me if I'm going to be an ICO investor, especially in a bear market. I'm Dave Young from CryptoVest.com and this was Token Talk. If you want to stay up on the inside track of what's going on with ICOs, early as it happens, you want to be hitting the subscribe button. You probably want to be hitting the bell as well so you don't miss out on the vital dates for crowd sales. Stay current, stay valid, stay tuned. Stay careful, the bears are out again this week. Till next time.